In this video tutorial, we'll look at the part cost estimator, which is available as part of the synthesizer tool. The part cost estimator helps us explore the cost of manufacture at the early stages of design, depending on the materials and fabrication method of our product. Note that this tutorial builds on a previous video tutorial, which looks at how to plot charts in CES EduPack. Let's open the software, and we are presented with the databases window. The part cost estimator within the synthesizer tool is available in advanced level 3 databases. Let's open the level 3 sustainability database. We are now presented with the home page. In the main toolbar we can click on the synthesizer tool which opens a new window, giving us the option to choose a model. The part cost estimator is situated here. Let's click on it. We can now see at the top an introduction to the tool with an image and a description, followed by the sections that need filling out. Let's begin to fill in our component details. Our product is, in this example, a car door panel, and we will compare two material options, steel and polypropylene. Let's start with the one made of steel. By pressing Browse and expanding the Metals and Alloys folder, we can find our material. More precisely, we'll open ferrous, micro-alloy and high-strength steel of drawing quality, the YS140 cold-rolled steel. The part mass, in this case, is 5 kilograms, and the part length is 1 meter. We will look at a batch size, meaning the number of parts we want to manufacture, between 100 and 1 million. Within that range, let's choose to get 6 values. This will create six new material records. Now let's move on to the primary shaping process. Let's again click on Browse. In the Deformation folder, under Forging Rolling, we choose Cold Shape Rolling to manufacture the steel door panel. The availability will be Custom Form, here selected by default, and the part complexity is standard. We will leave the load factor, the overhead rate, and the capital write-off time at their default values. Under Secondary Shaping Process, we can include a secondary process by ticking the box. Going to Browse, Deformation and Sheet, we'll choose the Press Forming Process. The part complexity is standard, and the amount of scrap metal we'll set to 10%. And the scrap is recycled. Now we only have to give the record a name. Under Record Naming, let's name the material Steel, the primary process Rolled, and the secondary process Pressed. When we're happy with our parameters, let's click on Create. Once completed, the six records are automatically saved in the My Records folder, which we will look at later. We can now create another batch of records to compare with the Steel option. In order to do that, let's click on Previous and change some parameters. We'll choose a 30% glass-filled polypropylene. The part mass for a polymer door panel is about 4 kilograms, and the primary shaping process will be thermoplastic injection moulding. We will deselect the secondary shaping process and name the material PP and the primary process moulded. If we click on Create, the records for the polypropylene option are generated. Now we can click on Finish. By going to Browse, we can now see our records in the My Records folder here. There are six records generated for each material. Let's right-click and change the colour of the PP records to blue. Pressing on Chart Select, let's now make a chart stage and plot the data to find out which option is cheaper. In the chart stage, there is a category called Part Cost Estimator. We'll choose the attribute Part Cost for the y-axis, and for the x-axis, we'll choose Batch Size. Press OK. Here, we can use the Curve tool available in the toolbar to trace the curves. We can now see that the Polymer option in blue is cheaper for batch sizes up to about 12,000. And for bigger series, steel is the cheapest option. In the following video tutorials, we will look at the different advanced databases and tools available in CES EduPack.